I'm going to move straight on because uh, time is tight. The next item of business is a debate on motion 10039 in the name of Liam Kerr on railway policing. Can I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to pass the request to speak on buttons now? Are you ready, Mr Kerr? Well, I'm really impressed. Uh, I call on Liam Kerr to speak and move the motion. Eight minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The British Transport Police polices railways, stations and trains throughout the UK. They are accountable to the BTP Chief Constable, the BTP Authority and ultimately the UK Parliament. The BTP is funded by Network Rail, the train operating companies and freight operating companies who enter into a contract with the BTPA. The Smith Commission recommended devolving the functions of the BTP and the UK Parliament has since passed the Scotland Act, transferring legislative competence in relation to the policing of railways in Scotland to the Scottish Parliament. On June the 27th, 2017, the SNP Green Alliance voted through the Railway Policing Scotland Bill to transfer responsibility for, for railway policing in Scotland from the BTP to Police Scotland. This means that the Scottish division of the BTP will be carved out from the UK BTP and become a part of Police Scotland. The date for the merger is April 2019. We respect all of those decisions. We do, however, believe it would be prudent to pause the integration, and here's why. It is imperative that this transfer happens smoothly and that nothing compromises the effectiveness and ability of the railway police. HMICS have stated the scope and scale of the challenges and complexity posed by the transfer should not be underestimated. And it's not surprising. DCC Livingston was clear to the Justice Committee yesterday when he said, this is not a merger of like with like. The BTP are different in their pensions, entitlements, employee status. And those concerns remain. HMICS have described the lack of a plan to integrate control rooms as a key risk to the merger and say, much work will need to be done around the interface of each organization's contact, command and control systems and processes as well as the interface between Police Scotland and Network Rail's control systems. True. And yesterday, DCC Livingston told the Justice Committee that ICT provision, terms and conditions, pensions and pre-existing third-party contracts will not be resolved by the 1st of April 2019. And he could not provide detail on when the work on these would be complete. So that presumably means that in relation to these areas, post-April 2019, there will be an ongoing dependency on the BTP authority with only a partial integration. There are also significant personnel concerns. In a response to the Justice Convener's letter, the BTP Federation revealed that they have not had sight of any written proposals on pensions, pay, or terms and conditions, and questioned how the SPF could represent BTP officers who are not Crown servants. It is notable in this regard that both the SPF and the BTPF sent letters to the Justice Committee this month highlighting the lack of consultation that they say has been had with them by the Scottish Government. Uncertainty abounds on pensions. Serving BTP officers are part of a very healthy BTP fund which sits within a further fund valued at around £24 billion. It is understood by officers that the Scottish Government plans to set up a segregated, closed fund for transferring BTP officers, perhaps with retired colleagues. And one estimate suggests that that has a £400,000 setup cost, plus, of course, an ever-increasing administration cost to the taxpayer, to say nothing of the loss of security for those transferees. And furthermore, Given that the Minister conceded to me in November that Tupi doesn't apply to this transaction, there remains ambiguity over which terms and conditions will apply, to the extent that the BTPF suggests, quote, the complexities of this have been underestimated. Now, I know the Labour amendment, which we shall be supporting today, seeks to address this point, so I'll leave that for them to develop. And what of the BTP personnel based outside Scotland who support Scottish operations? It remains unclear in the absence of Tupi what impact there would be on them post-merger. So it's not perhaps surprising, therefore, that an internal staff survey, survey revealed only around a third of BTP officers say they will definitely transfer, with the remainder considering leaving, retiring, or moving to other BTP divisions. Yesterday, DCC Livingston agreed that some BTP officers might decide to retire before the merger to ensure that their terms and conditions were not affected. If they leave, presumably they must be backfilled from Police Scotland. Can Police Scotland really spare, say, 50 officers and get them trained up in time? And what if legacy BTP officers are taken from their core rail policing duties to bolster the resilience of Police Scotland? 
How comfortable will the funding companies be with that, or the public? And talking of the taxpayer, it is notable that the HMICS report says the full costs associated with the transfer of railway policing in Scotland have not yet been assessed. And there is uncertainty amongst stakeholders as to who will pay these costs. Now on that final point, it would appear that the police service agreements between the train operating companies, the freight operating companies and network rail that are currently in place will need to be addressed and concluded on by the 18th of March this year as the BTP authority is required to provide 12 months notice of termination. What the rail companies will need to know during the negotiations, which will need to take place with Police Scotland, of course, is what is happening from April 2019. Who is going to be policing our railways and how? And as we discovered yesterday, that is currently not clear. Then there is the other side. Police Scotland, as we looked at earlier, is in the midst of a challenging period. The Chief Constable is on special leave. Four other senior officers have been suspended for a range of allegations. The Justice Secretary is in the chamber fairly constantly defending himself. The SPA is under its third new leader in four years and in a recruitment process for five new board members. But on that point, despite the fact that railway experience on that board was a key HMICS recommendation, which is not surprising given that the BTPA, which is the SPA's counterpart, currently has 12 board members, whose sole focus is railway policing. But the chair of the SPA confirmed yesterday they are not looking to recruit specialist railway experience to the board. The BTPF have made clear that they do not feel as though the current climate of policing within Scotland lends itself to integrating the BTP. And we agree. Presiding officer, that is the context within which we bring this debate. The merger might be a good idea. It might deliver the kind of seamless police service and cost savings that ministers clearly believe it will. But it has to be done right. It is clear that the integration date is unachievable. The BTPF described the April 19 date as, quote, a cliff edge. The merger process has extremely difficult issues to address, such as pensions, terms and conditions, estates, career progression, cross-border policing difficulties, police staff and budgets. It has to be more sensible to just take a step back, pause and set a realistic time frame. Understand the significant value add delivered by the BTP. Let's review how that value add can best continue to be delivered going forward and build a detailed, full and robust plan involving a detailed cost analysis which asks whether the aims of integration can be secured through a different route with fewer risks. Many voices are offering those suggestions and I suggest we listen to them. It is time to pause, it is time to listen and I move the motion in my name. Thank you. Thank you very much Mr Kerr. I call on Hamza Yusuf to speak to move amendment 10039.2. Minister, six minutes please. Thank you, President Officer. And at the beginning, of course, I moved the amendment uh, in, in the government's name. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to participate in this afternoon's debate. Uh, first, let me reflect on the fact that, of course, this Parliament, as Liam Kerr said, passed the Railway Policing Scotland Act in June last year. Uh, this is the basis on which the work uh, pro is progressing under the oversight of the Joint Programme Board, chaired by the Scottish and UK governments. Uh, my starting point is, therefore, that the will of the Parliament is that integration should happen. And Liam Kerr mentioned uh, what he flippantly called, I think, this green, the Scottish SNP Green Alliance. He did forget to mention, of course, it was in his own Conservatives, UK and Scottish manifestos, the integration of British Transport Police in 2017. Let me first deal with the parts of the Conservative motion that refer to leadership in Police Scotland and the effective, effectiveness <coughs> excuse me, of the police response to important issues such as terrorism. I'm clear that the evidence does not support the concerns that have been expressed in that motion. I would go further, in fact, and say that uh, the motion, uh, as, as the Conservative motion, undermines the enormous effort our officers put into tackling acts of terror, indeed preventing acts of terror as they do on the front line. It does, in fact, a disservice to them and a disservice to BTP officers to suggest that somehow they would be incapable of carrying out that function while integration takes place. In fact, last March, the Prime Minister said, if I'll just finish this quote and then give way, last March, the Prime Minister herself said, Police Scotland is the second biggest force in the UK. 
with huge capabilities and capacity and working with other police forces across the UK to help keep us safe and I give way to Daniel, Daniel Johnson. Thank you. Uh, just given uh, the, the, the Minister's remarks, I was just wondering what he, his reaction would be to Nigel Goodhead, Chair of the BTP Federation, who raised exactly those points in terms of uh, his concerns and calls for, for suspending the integration. Minister. I simply uh, don't agree. Police Scotland is directly connected to the UK-wide anti-terrorism network. We all saw media reports of armed police Scotland officers at railway stations across Scotland last May when there was a critical state of alert. The reality is that BTP in Scotland already relies on Police Scotland for key anti-terrorism capabilities. Of course, these matters were well rehearsed during the passage of the Railway Policing Scotland Act, but even in the last few days, we've seen further evidence of Police Scotland's effectiveness, bringing to justice nine members of a sophisticated, organised crime gang who were sentenced to a total of 87 years in prison. Now, presiding officer, as ministers have made clear in this chamber previously, Successes such as this are built on the outstanding commitment of officers and staff who provide leadership at every level. That strength and depth ensures public safety from a wide range of threats, including terrorism, every day in our communities, cities, airports and ports right across Scotland. Police Scotland is therefore well, appraised, uh, well, in, uh, well placed to take on these additional responsibilities. Let me now turn, presenting officer, to the progress of the integration programme, building on the update I provided to the Justice Committee on the 31st of October. As members will recall, ministers have given a clear triple lock guarantee to secure the jobs, pay and pensions of railway policing officers and staff in Scotland. Secondary legislation is now being drafted on the basis that officers and staff will retain the same terms and conditions of services, the same pension and the same employment status. In short, planning is proceeding on the basis of transferring officers and staff as is in relation to terms and conditions now give way. Uh, Jamie Green. Uh, I thank the Minister for an update on that very issue of terms and conditions. If he is so confident that this matter has been addressed, why did DCC Livingston and Justice Committee say that the April 2019 deadline for this still is proving to be challenging? He specifically mentioned terms and conditions. So why is the Minister confident but the police themselves aren't? Minister. No, I, I, completely, I read in detail and looked again at detail at what DCC Ian Livingston said. And, and, and as actually Liam Kerr himself said in his opening remarks, he was talking, of course, about ICT functions primarily. And when it came to pensions, he was talking about harmonising them. But he did say, of course, that he was confident about operational uh, integration uh, by the April 19 date. In terms of uh, Liam Kerr mentioned the BTP Federation and, and our engagement with them, can I just say that the BTF, uh, BTPF recently attended four days of detailed discussions on terms and conditions with three additional days now scheduled in February and a further meeting with the Federation and the TSSA planned for the 12th of February. That detailed work is allowing us to map current terms of condition, terms of condition and ensure they are transferred intact. The Joint Programme Board recently published an extensive Q&A to help officers and staff understand what the transfer means for them, but we recognise that there are still areas where they are looking for greater detail. The Scottish Government is therefore, if you just let me make progress because I know my time is short, the Scottish Government is therefore committed to continuing to engage with BT officers and staff representatives to further develop materials that explain that transfer. This will be carried forward alongside face-to-face -face engagement with officers and st staff led by Police Scotland and BTP with a number of sessions having already taken place. However, let me say, uh, presiding officer, I know the Green uh, Amendment was not uh, selected. If it was, in fact, this uh, government would have supported it because it's fair to say that we understand that despite all of this work, despite all of this engagement, it is clear to us that there is, and I acknowledge that there is some level of discontent among some stakeholders and indeed uh, some officers. So we will redouble our efforts uh, with stakeholders and we will, of course, honour our commitment to no detriment. Uh, presiding, uh, no, you must conclude now. Thank yes, you. I, I know you took interventions, but I've given you extra time. Uh, can I call on Colin Smith to speak to and move amendment uh, 10039.3? Five minutes, please. Thank you, presiding officer. When the railway policing bill came before Parliament, Labour shared the universal stakeholder concerns about the bill from the trade unions, RMT, ASLEF and the TSSA, the British Transport Police and their Federation, the Rail Delivery Group, ScotRail, Cross Country and HMIC, whose report on the merger concluded that, and I quote, no detailed and authoritative business case for the transfer to Police Scotland 
was developed. Those concerns were universally ignored by the Scottish Government, a government obsessed by putting ideology ahead of addressing the concerns about integration. The failure to even consult on the three options for railway policing in Scotland presented by the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee highlighted arrogance at the heart of the government when it comes to integration. A government that has not only failed to address genuine concerns, but failed to engage in a meaningful way with the stakeholders who raised those concerns. During one Justice Committee session, the British Transport Police Federation stated, and again I quote, we have felt that our concerns and the risk associated with integration have simply been ignored. One of the key concerns raised with the Justice Committee throughout the, the process of the bill was the threat posed to Transport Police's capacity and expertise. The British Transport Police's submission to the committee posed the question, how in practice will the plans to merge the two forces in Scotland embed and sustain BTP's specialist transport policing ethos? And Michael Hogg from the RMT Union stated that, and again I quote, from a staff and trade union perspective, we can see the BTP expertise and knowledge being lost if the merger of it and Police Scotland goes ahead. Protecting the expertise and focus of the Transport Police is therefore vital for to maintain the current high standard of service. And key to this is the need to provide firm proposals on the future of staff pay and conditions. Whilst the Government have confirmed that jobs, pay and pensions will be protected during the process of integration, too many questions still remain unanswered about the long-term implications of integration for staff. The consequences of this uncertainty is there for all to see. The British Transport Police's staff survey found that two-thirds of officers were unsure whether they will even transfer to Police Scotland following the proposed integration. An HMIC reported at the end of last year that, and I quote, as a result of the uncertainty about their future, officers described morale as being low. We urgently need firm proposals from the government to protect staff pay and conditions in the long term. Moving forward with this, this integration before these details have been published and agreed would be utterly irresponsible. But in the time since the bill passed through Parliament, it's not just concerns surrounding staff terms and conditions that remain unresolved and that have been compounded. As someone who represents the south of Scotland, where all 8 million of the cross-border services pass through on the west and east coast main lines and the Nith Valley line every year, it's a huge concern that it's still unclear exactly what arrangements will be put in place to properly police cross-border services. And this week, Police Scotland Deputy Chief Constable Ian Livingston told the Justice Committee it has become absolutely clear that merger issues such as integrating two IT systems would not be tackled by the government's deadline for integration April next year. All this comes before you even take into account that Police Scotland and the Scottish Police Authority are currently in a state of uncertainty at best and at worst a state of chaos, unable to get their own act together, never mind take on additional responsibilities. To date, the Scottish Government's approach to the integration of transport policing has been defined by their uncompromising and reckless pursuit of their own agenda and burying their head in the sand. But Parliament today has an opportunity... I'll give way, and I think I've got my last minute, but I'll give way. Minister. I just wanted to ask, he talks about uh, uncertainty, I understand his opposition, but can he say after all these years what Labour's position would have been to have do, done with BTP uh, post the Smith Commission? Mr Smith. Well, one of the cases that was put forward was for a separate Scotland BTP. If one of the cases that was put forward was to, 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 to a separate Scotland BTP, but the point was three proposals were put forward. We would have consulted on all those three proposals. Maybe the minister would like, to, maybe the minister would like to get to his feet and explain why he refused to consult on the three proposals that were put forward, and simply for entirely ideological reasons pursued one single obsessive agenda. Now, Parliament now has an opportunity to tell the government, at the very least, to pause and for once start to listen, to take stock to work constructively with all stakeholders in Parliament to ensure that the changes the Railway bu Policing Bill will bring, unwanted as they may be, should be brought in in a way that at least minimises the risk to public safety and properly protects staff. Last year, the Chairman of the British Transport Federation, Nigel Goodman, wrote to the Transport Minister asking him not to put passengers and staff at risk. In his letter, he said, Given the recent terrorist attack in Manchester and London and the ongoing and significant threat from terrorism, I am writing to you as a matter of urgency to implore you to suspend the Railway Policing Scotland Bill. The government needs to listen to those warnings instead of simply brushing those concerns aside as the Minister did in his comments earlier. They need to call a pause in the integration of the British Transport Police into Police Scotland. And crucially, the government needs to provide firm proposals on the long-term pay and conditions so we can address the uncertainty staff currently face and prevent a workforce crisis that will happen if they do not listen. The best way to do that, President Officer, is to support Labour's amendment today and to a perfectly reasonable motion. I therefore move that amendment in the name of Daniel Johnston and myself. Thank you.
Thank you. And before I move to open date, can I apologise to the Minister? You did not overrun your time. I didn't, I know, I didn't, I didn't have my glasses on. They're on now, and it's on the record. You were not Minister at fault. I now move to the open debate. Can I uh, call Margaret Mitchell to by Rona Mackay? Four minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The security of the travelling public relies on the effective policing of our railways. Following the recommendation of the Smith Commission, the Scotland Act 2016 provided for the functions of the British Transport Police to be devolved. The British Transport Police Authority submitted three possible options to achieve this recommendation. The Scottish Government ignored two of these options and only consulted on the full integration of BTP into Police Scotland. Thereafter, the Railway Policing Scotland Bill 2016 was referred to the Justice Committee as lead committee for the bill. Members of the committee were divided on supporting the general principles which were approved by majority at stage one. At stage three, SNP MSPs with the support of Green MSPs voted through the bill despite widespread criticism from stakeholders who included the British Transport Police Federation, the British Transport Police Superintendents Association branch, the rail unions, including RMT, ASLOV, TSSA, the Railway Delivery Group, with, which represents Network Rail, and the train oper operators, including ScotRail, Cross Country, Virgin Trains, East Coast, and Trans Pennine Express and even Samaritan Scotland, which has first-hand knowledge of suicide and mental health issues in real settings. These stakeholders warned of the dangerous consequences of full integration, starting with the loss of expertise resulting from the exodus of BTP Scotland officers as a result of the Scottish Government's failure to deliver on the guarantees sought by these officers regarding jobs, pay, and pensions. Meanwhile, the rail oper operators who fund the BTP in Scotland, such as ScotRail, Virgin Trains and Cross Country, express concern about the loss of specialisms, such as reducing cable theft and assessing bond threats. These skills not only keep our railways safe, but help minimise the impact of incidents on a UK basis. And perhaps most tellingly still, in an independent, in the independent watchdog's report on BTP in Scotland and the performance transport, uh, transfer, HMICS stated that the Scottish Government has failed to set out a single, detailed and authoritative, authoritative business case. There was a, 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 a total lack of thought regarding the fact that the proposals would lead to a dual command structure for railway policing across Great Britain and that the specialist and distinct nature of BTP's work has been underestimated. More specifically, the report highlights the interface between the different contact, command and control systems of the relevant organisations as a key risk of integration, which is critical to ensure the safety of officers and the travelling public. Presiding officer, I'm in my last minute. Um, the BTP Scotland's division has an exam exemplary re record in ensuring our railways are secure. Given all of the above, and at a time of heightened terrorism awareness, it is absolute folly to proceed with this integration. This is especially the case as only yesterday, DCC Livingston confirmed that IT issues as well as pensions in terms of conditions would not be resolved by integration day April 2019. And that he shares the concerns about how officers are going to be integrated. I therefore urge Parliament to support the motion calling for the Cabinet Secretary at the very least to pause and reconsider these ill-conceived plans. I call Rona Mackay to be followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, presiding officer. This is a debate that should, in my view, not be happening because the premise of the Conservative motion on the Railway Policing Scotland Bill, which was passed last summer, which was passed last summer by this parliament, simply isn't valid. We seem to have been hearing a rerun of the merits of the bill from opposition so far, and that doesn't actually reflect this motion. Liam Kerr's motion 
appears to, appears to be framing the motion uh, around the, to pause the merger of B2B around the leadership challenges facing Police Scotland, which is, as Liam, myself, and the rest of the Justice Committee heard yesterday from Acting Chief Constable Ian Livingston, utter nonsense. ACC Livingston emphatically stated that policing on the ground is not affected in any way by the internal wranglings at the top of the tree. Indeed, he forcefully outlined the strength of policing in Scotland today in the main down to having the effective, an effective single force and he reiterated that crime is at its lowest level since 1974. The, yes. Liam Kerr. Yes, thank the member for taking the intervention. Um, just to get it back on point, is the member aware of whether the government have made any contingency plans should two-thirds of Scottish BTP officers decide not to transfer to Police Scotland? Rona Mackay. Can I address that later, please? I'm coming on to that later. The motion goes on to highlight railway policing as being of critical importance to public safety, particularly in responses to terrorism, which is, of course, correct. But the fact is that merging BT with Police Scotland will, as we've heard in evidence before the bill was passed, strengthen the force's ability to respond quickly to terrorist threats cross-border. And this has been happening, and it will continue to happen after the merger. With more than 93 million rail, rail journeys made within Scotland each year and another 8 million cross-border rail journeys, it makes sense to upskill all police officers to ensure greater public safety and security of our country. Liam Kerr says ACC Livingston is worried about pay and pensions of the officers, the terms and conditions being transferred, and of course that's understandable. But what Mr Kerr didn't say in his speech was that ACC Livingston stated categorically that he personally has nothing to do with that side of the merger. And his remit was purely on the police operational side. But of course, his officers' pay and conditions were of concern to him. Presiding officer, it's been said many times during the passing of this bill that the Scottish Government has given a triple lock guarantee to protect the jobs, pay and pensions of British transport police officers and staff in Scotland are working hard with officers and their representatives to ensure the terms of the transfer are fully understood. A further meeting with BTP Federation and Transport Salary Staffs Association is scheduled to take place next month. The BTP Federation has been briefed that the Joint Programme Board is progressing draft secondary legislation to transfer officers and staff in Scotland to Police Scotland. And it will be done with no detriment to the pensions or serving of serving deferred or retired BTP of BT officers and staff. Presiding officer, there are currently 285 full-time equivalent BTP officers in Scotland and over 17,000 regular police officers. So in my view, integration can only improve the service of the rail, to the rail network throughout Scotland. As regards the specialism of transport policing uh, mentioned by Margaret Mitchell, this has been recognised emphatically and Police Scotland has confirmed that a bespoke railway policing unit will be established for railway policing in Scotland. What more proof do the Conservatives need that this merger has been planned meticulously to ensure a smooth transition in 2019? In addition, integrating BTP with Police Scotland will make it fully accountable to the people of Scotland and the Scottish Parliament entirely as it should be. In conclusion, I repeat that it is simply preposterous to pause this process while negotiations are ongoing, and I urge the Conservatives to stop trying to derail this merger, which will make Scotland a safer and more secure place to live and travel. Thank you. I call Neil Bibby to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, my position and the position of Scottish Labour on the Railway Policing Act and the Scottish Government's intention regarding the British Transport Police has not changed since we last debated the issue. Uh, I do not support the merger. Uh, there is, as I see it, no reason why the devolution of the British Transport Police in Scotland should mean the dissolution of the British Transport Police in Scotland. But what I hope we can all agree on across the Chamber is that throughout this process and the Parliament's ongoing scrutiny of the merger, our absolute priority must always be the safety of the travelling public. My views about the merger have always been informed by the views of the British Transport Police Officer and staff unions. They have been consistent in arguing that integration could, on a practical level, have an impact on their members and their capacity to keep people safe. They have described the merger as imprudent and they have warned that it could result in an inferior service. And they remain deeply concerned about what the merger means for officers and staff with the dilution of specialist railway policing skills and they also have concerns about the ongoing uncertainty over terms and conditions. There was always questions about the path of full integration by 2019 chosen 
by the Scottish Government. I don't think any of us could uh, say that this merger was ever going to be easy or straightforward. And that was backed up by evidence to the Justice Committee yesterday, confirming issues over the integration of IT services, uh, pensions, um, terms and conditions being uh, unresolved. Indeed, as has already been mentioned, Acting Chief Constable Ian Livingston stated that those issues would not be resolved for the 1st of, May, uh, 1st of April 2019, the date of the proposed uh, merger with Police Scotland. As has also been mentioned, Nigel Goodband, Chair of the British Transport Police Federation, representing frontline officers, issued a statement responding to yesterday's committee uh, session in which he said, now it's clear that full integration cannot be achieved by April 2019. It is our suggestion that the process is suspended until such time as there is a full and robust plan, detailed analysis of cost and a full and complete understanding of the terms and conditions of our members. And I think we should all, uh, every member of this chamber, give the fullest consideration to what I think is a serious and genuine request by the BTP Federation on behalf of frontline officers we trust with our safety week in, week out. I would also like to remind the Chamber that these latest calls for a suspension in the process follow an 11,000 strong petition uh, collected by the TSSA trade union calling for a halt to the merger. It is of utmost importance that the workforce and also passengers has confidence in the new railway policing arrangements, whatever they might be. I believe putting the process on pause would send an important signal that the concerns of officers and staff are not being ignored and that they are being listened to and that there will be no rush to emerge. And I also believe it would send an important signal that lessons have been learned from the creation of Police Scotland. Uh, President officer, at stage three of the Railway Policing Bill, uh, the government uh, agreed and the parliament uh, accepted a number of my amendments which set out mechanisms uh, for engagement with trade unions on the face of the bill. This was just not a matter of process. It was an important matter of principle. We agreed that those who represent the workforce should have a voice in this merger. Given the steps that the Parliament and the Scottish Government were prepared to take last year to ensure that the workforce had a voice, it seems only right that we should demonstrate today that the concerns of the workforce have been heard and they will be listened to. And I also believe it's time to listen uh, regarding a halt to this merger. Thank you. I call John Finney to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, th this legislation was passed by this Parliament uh, and it has to be respected. Uh, and throughout the, the passage of the Bill, as many speakers have said, there were various concerns raised. Um, um, and I accept that the those for whom uh, the uh, integration of these two uh, services will never uh, be acceptable. And there was views held for various reasons. I, I take no issue with the Conservative Party bringing this forward. I think this is entirely appropriate that we discuss this, and I'll come on to why I think it's important. And, and I get that British Transport Police officers have pride in their, their, their uh, existing arrangements and, and the Federation as well. That's the force they joined, and as someone who served in two forces, I understand that. We've, we know that same um, mindset with regard to regimental amalgamations and the like. So absolutely, absolutely get that. But I think, once again, language is important. And talking about safety, safety, you know, I, I put that at the forefront of everything, and we will make decisions, the six of us here, and we personally on the basis of what we think is right. And that will mean some very odd sh shades of alliances and occasions, but that's, that's, that's what we did. And it's not very often I would find myself on the opposite side from Police Federation, Superintendents Association, uh, RMT uh, at all, I have to tell you. So um, they're held in good faith. The history of policing is, of course, that from uh, the Zetland Constabulary in, in the north, the Dumfries Borough in the south, there's been integrations. I have two neighbours, I think I mentioned here recently, who are members of Inverness Borough Police. Now, you'll not persuade them ever that there's ever going to be a police service to march that. And, but it's important that we do move on, and it's important that we don't forget as well. Assurances have been sought and given. So whilst we certainly won't be supporting the Conservative uh, um, a motion certainly won't be supporting the, the, the Scottish uh, 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 lending support to the Scottish Government motion, and, and I'm going to lay out why. Assurances were given on the following. Um, the concerns raised about terms and conditions were, were clearly genuine and, and remain, um, uh, and that's important because, as has been said, it's to ensure that um, um, integration um, is effective. 
We've heard the assurance, and I, I'm, I am reassured what I heard from the Minister here, and, and indeed his comments about our amendment, which is appreciated. Uh, still not um, supporting your, your amendment, though. This was a complex issue, but as someone said recently, it's as complicated as we want to make it. Uh, you know, these, these are matters of, of uh, the pension, I think, is, is a complicated matter, but terms and conditions. I want to touch on some of the operational things. I, I appreciate not everyone sat through the extensive evidence that was taken in this, but it's entirely wrong to say that the issue of control rooms, for instance, suddenly appears at this point. That issue was addressed. There is no issue uh, whatsoever about the collaborative working that takes place between the Scottish forces, forces south of the border and the BTP. And of course, in Scotland, you're going to have a situation where there is one control room rather than the situation of dealing with 43 and the rest of the G. Um, no, I won't. Um, um, it's also uh, important uh, not to uh, uh, make issues around the cross-border. The cross-border arrangements were dealt with historically. They were reinforced again in the, the, the uh, 2012 Act. They were covered extensively in this. It's a regular thing we heard of officers escorting Man uh, Newcastle United fans. No, I won't take an intervention. Um, the Newcastle United fans, um, in, in the short period we had, if it was a longer debate, most certainly I would. So these issues have been addressed. I think my word... Um, Acting Chief Constable Livingston's words have been much quoted here, and I would say misrepresented. The IT issue, if we can resolve the existing IT issues, never mind any others within that time frame, that might be interesting. I think, um, moving forward, I, I see that the Scottish Government should be viewing themselves in this process as hosts, and as hosts they should be welcoming. And the way they do that is to smooth the passage and sort out the terms and conditions. Now, as I say, I, I, I welcome what the Minister said in terms of jobs, pay and pensions. But... I have a concern that there's a measure of complacency and whether that's around the timetabling of this and the time that, it's, that, it's, that we feel is left, there's a lot to be sorted out in a short time. We need to get it sorted out soon. Uh, Liam MacArthur, followed by Fulton MacGregor. Thank you, Deputy uh, President. Officer. Can I uh, welcome uh, John Finney's acknowledgement of the legitimacy of this uh, debate? I think some have called that into question, suggesting it goes against the, the will of Parliament. I think the concerns that have been raised uh, with us as a Parliament uh, and, and individually about the impact this bill is likely to have, the, t the time scale of it, it would be remiss of us not to be holding uh, government to account. So I welcome the fact that we're having that debate. And since we passed that legislation, since then the independent policing regulator has criticised the proposals for lacking, as others have said, a detailed and authoritative business plan. Derek Penman's draft report even referred to the merger as being politically motivated. Uh, we have seen many BTP officers and staff expressing serious doubts about whether uh, or not they see a future for themselves in the newly merged operation. And yet none of this is new. Uh, most respondents to the government's initial consultation ranged from sceptical to hostile. The response to the committee's call for evidence was scarcely more supportive uh, of the plans. Uh, ministers, of course, cling to the delusion that the merger merely uh, implements the will of the Smith Commission. In truth, it reflects only the SNP's interpretation of Smith. Merger was just one of three options identified, and it was also the one uh, with the highest degree of risk and opposed by most stakeholders. Ministers made no attempt, as Colin Smith said, to seek views on the other options, options that would have minimised disruption to a service that we know is operating efficiently, effectively, and with a high degree of professionalism across the United Kingdom. Having made their minds up, ministers carried out no proper assessment of the risks or costs of abolishing uh, BTP. And the failure to do this basic work, identifying and planning for both the benefits and the disbenefits, the risks and the costs associated with the merger, leaves the joint board with the task of implementing the policy at any cost and irrespective of the problems they identify. And that is just inexcusable. Little wonder, therefore, that current and former BTP officers and staff have been expressing concerns in the way that they have. Should significant numbers choose not to transfer or move on shortly after the merger, the loss of expertise and specialist policing knowledge would be highly damaging. And yet still, the Minister cannot provide the answers to the legitimate questions that officers and staff are asking. At the Justice Committee yesterday, DCC Livingston did make a valiant attempt to provide the reassurances he could, but he acknowledged that ministers themselves need to come up with many of the answers. He also acknowledged, too, that the merger could yet be postponed if those issues are not ironed out ahead of the deadline next year. I rather suspect that with everything else he has on his plate at the moment, 
This latest SNP centralisation is the last thing DCC Livingston and his colleagues at Police Scotland need right now. So with no clarity over risks or the business case, no clarity over costs or who is expected to pay, no clarity over future working arrangements and retention of specialist knowledge, it seems the only thing over which there is clarity at the moment is the government's pig-headed determination to ignore all of these concerns and carry on regardless. For years, SNP ministers have had an agenda to disband the British Transport Police in Scotland. For months, they have tried to come up with a justification and a way of making it work. To date, they have failed, Deputy, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's not too late for them to come to their senses, and for the sake of policing and in the public interest, I urge the government to pause this ill-thought-through merger, and I urge them to support the motion in Liam Kerr's name. Thank you. I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Oliver Mundell. Thank you, President Officer. The next time I hear a Tory tell me we shouldn't be having a referendum that was clearly outlined in their manifesto because we've already had one, I'll be talking about this motion. This Parliament decided less than a year ago to go ahead with these plans and work is well underway to making it so. This was after the bill went through the proper parliamentary process and I should know, as a member of the Justice Committee, that scrutinised it at all stages. And I take issue with the wording of Liam Kerr's motion. He's suggesting that DCC Livingston and his team of senior officers around him are incapable of carrying out their duties. This is unacceptable. Jeez. But let's also be clear here. Given that Parliament has passed this bill, whether the Tories like it or not, is Liam Kerr suggesting that this Parliament intervenes in a police operational matter? The two Tory motions today are counter to each other and lack consistency. And thankfully, Liam Kerr's earlier assertion that his party will be at the next Scottish Government is likely to remain a dream. No, I won't take an intervention because of the time limits. I'm, I'm not sure what committee some of the members eh, are referring to. Presiding officer, yesterday I asked DC Livingston a very direct question at committee if, I, if he felt a pause would be prudent. He made it clear that, that if at any time he felt that a pause or delay was necessary, he would ha highlight it. But at this time, however, plans are going as expected and there should be no issue with the integration going ahead on 1st of April next year. DCC Livingston, as part of the wider debate, also highlighted the policing is not in crisis. And I think it's important that we continue to praise our officers and have faith in them, particularly when we're talking about these operational matters. When I spoke in the Stage 3 debate last year, I highlighted various reasons why I supported this integration, and I haven't changed my position on that. Instead of a limited number of officers being trained in railway policing, all police officers in Scotland will be trained in railway policing, increasing coverage across the whole of Scotland. And just like other areas of policing, like the roads and the CID, there will be officers who are trained to an advanced level, and I don't hear the Tories calling for a Scottish Roads Police Force to be established. And when you consider the numbers, 285 BTP police compared with 17,000 police Scotland officers, I can't even believe that we're having the discussion. Let's ensure that, that all our police officers are trained and able to provide police anywhere in Scotland. And of course, there are ongoing issues of governance with the Police Scotland, but the suggestion from Lee and Care that everyday policing should stop as a result is ridiculous. There is a reason that Chief Constable has a deputy, just like in every other organisation. If Ruth Davidson was to take a leave of absence, would the Conservatives stop until she came back? And it will be interesting to see the Labour support their Tory friends yet again kicking the police, just like they do with our nurses and teachers. They seem to be supporting each other more and more often. I wonder if they can see that. It's time both parties stopped playing politics and valued our public services. Having heard DC Livingston yesterday, I have every faith that he'll be the first to say if plans to integrate by April are not realistic and we need a pause. I know the Scottish Government will continue to monitor the situation on that basis. It's DCC Livingston that we'll listen to, not a Conservative motion about whether a pause is needed. Thank you, President Officer. Oliver Mundell, followed by James Dornan. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm perhaps uh, a little bit over-eager uh, to, to uh, start speaking in this debate, but I do have to be honest enough to admit that I actually agree with Rona Mackay on this occasion. This debate shouldn't, take, shouldn't be taking place. Uh, we should never have got to this point in the first place. Having sat on the Justice Committee at the time, like Fulton McGregor, and listened to the evidence that came in from experts from practically every stakeholder organisation, it's been clear right from the start that this is not only the wrong plan, it's the wrong time, 
and that the consultation held by the Scottish Government right back at the start was fundamentally flawed. Yep. And it's... Yeah? Hamza Yusuf. We will create a national infrastructure police force bringing together the civil nuclear constabulary, constabulary the Ministry of Defence and the British Transport Police to improve the protection of critical infrastructure such as nuclear sites, railways and strategic road transport. UK Conservative and Scottish Conservative Manifesto 2017. If it wasn't the right plan for us, why on earth was it the right plan for them? Oliver Mundell. Thank, thank you uh, to the Minister for that intervention. It's almost as if it's exactly the same intervention as I took uh, from his colleagues uh, during the stage three of this debate. The Conservatives set out a completely different proposal than the Scottish Government, because what we were interested in was protecting specialised policing. We are interested in retaining expertise. What we're not proposing anywhere in the United Kingdom is merging specialised policing in with regular policing. We recognise the skills that these officers have and the value they add to public safety. And it's little wonder that uh, we have the Minister standing up and saying that he recognises that some people are still discontent with this process. That is because the Minister continues to ignore what experts in this area are saying. No wonder they're discontented. They've been taken along on an ideological ride. Yeah. This is a politically driven plan that has absolutely nothing to do with the best interests of policing. The SNP are always asking if other people have a backbone. Fulton McGregor is telling us uh, that uh, my colleagues uh, shouldn't be bringing this issue back. Well, they should, because sometimes the government's got to be big enough to accept and acknowledge that it's made a mistake. And this is... Fulton McGregor. Except that the will of the parliament, the democratic will of the parliament, was to pass this bill. Oliver Mundell. Of course uh, I accept that, but it doesn't mean that decisions of this parliament shouldn't, and particularly the government, shouldn't continue to be scrutinised, particularly as new evidence comes to light. What we've seen is time move on. We're getting closer and closer Excuse to a deadline. Excuse me, can we stop it with the sedentary interventions, please? Carry on, Mr Mundell. We're getting closer and closer to a deadline that others have described as a hard cliff face, and we're still no closer to seeing... Uh, tr British Transport Police officers satisfied with the terms and conditions they're being offered. Yeah. And what worries me more from my discussion with rank and file officers in Police Scotland is that there is a growing resentment amongst them that other officers are going to be joining their force on a different set of terms and conditions after they've been through what has been a very difficult process. And I think it's very fair to say after the first debate we've sat through this afternoon that Police Scotland is not in a position to prioritise what is a very complex process. I think that colleagues have made very compelling arguments from across the political divide for a pause. The question now is whether or not the Scottish Government is finally willing to listen. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from James Dornan. Presiding officer, and before I start with my speech, can I just say for the record, you missed this earlier on, I've known Michael Matheson longer than anybody. I've known him since he was five, he was a cheeky wee, he was a cheeky wee midden then, and he's not improved at all. Uh, I, 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 I have listened to these speeches. I have, watched, I have watched the performances here. I've heard Liam Kerr with his very soft, gentle, persuasive, lawyery voice. I was almost persuaded myself, and then I realised behind that was an ideological fervour to make sure that nothing that belongs to British ever becomes Scottish, because that is not what you're about. This, this was agreed. This was agreed by the Conservatives in the Smith Commission that the devolution of railway police, sit down, sit down, that railway policing, that railway policing Mr. Mundell, would be devolved. Please. It appears to me, listening to Oliver Mundell, listening to Margaret Mitchell, that you were ha quite happy to agree that as long as you never had to do anything with it. Because this parliament, as Fulton has quite rightly said, passed it last year. And now what we get 
is let's kick into the long grass. We get honest if he knew Bibby, he doesn't support it then, still doesn't support it now. And although he got what he wanted, and in terms of amendments on the face of the bill, he's still looking for more. So what he should be doing is we should be supporting this and we should be moving forward with it. Now, if anybody here is seriously saying that having British Transport Police alongside Scotland's, Police Scotland is a bad thing in terms of safety and in terms of joint working, then I don't think they're paying appropriate attention. Because as, a, as a, the, the Minister said earlier on, police, it's, it's Police Scotland that go to these railway stations when there are any major issues, when there was terrorism issues. They didn't phone up the armed branch of the British Transport Police. And as we get there, they, it was Police Scotland that, that, that made sure that they got there. And if they're all part of the same police force, these sort of things can happen much, much quicker, much, much smoother than they do just now. Now, the other reason is I, I had a constituent, a, a, a man, a full-grown man, he has got pretty severe mental health issues. He has got very uh, pretty severe mental health issues. And if you find that humorous, then clearly that says quite a lot about some of the people on your benches. He got, he got involved in an issue on the railways. He got arrested by British Transport Police. Not long after that, I get contacted by his parents who were distraught at the confusion and concern that they had because of the way he was dealt with. Now, the way he was dealt with was not because either of those police forces were dealing with him wrong, but because they deal with things in different ways. So what he would have expected from Police Scotland, they didn't get exactly the same way from the British Transport Police. It led to confusion for him, it led to concern for his parents, and to be fair, it would have led to concern for many of the British Transport Police. If they were part of the same police force, the same police service, they'd have had a uniform way of working, that would have known exactly what he was going into, and somebody with mental health issues particularly would not have had the concerns he had. I mean, this is not about bettering the, the, the police system. This is about you holding on, you giving the de devolution of powers, but not really wanting us to, uh, to use them. And I, if you honestly think that Police Scotland taking in British Transport Police is going to be bad for, for the, the safety of, of the people in Scotland, then I think you've got it completely wrong. And in terms of terms and conditions, this has already been working on, worked on on a regular basis, and I'm pretty sure that when we get to it, everybody's going to be uh, happy. And obviously, there's never been a merge where everybody, uh, people who have been moving from one to the other have said, this sounds like a great idea. You'll always get staff saying, I want to stay where I am. I've been, I've been in this group for a long, long time, and I don't want to move to the other. It's common nature, and I don't think you should be making so much of it. Anyway, I support the amendment. Can I remind members they should always speak through the chair? And we now move on to the closing speeches, and I call Daniel Johnson. Uh, four minutes, please, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I, as I stand, I take a little bit of a deep breath, because I think maybe that's what's needed this time, because clearly some members are, are getting a, a little bit upset that we've had two fraught debates on policing. And can I just say, well, at least it gives them the opportunity to hear from me, not just once, not twice, but, but three times. So there's an upside to, to everything. But in all seriousness, the, the phrase, the will of the parliament has been used on many occasions, and there is nothing in the motion, nothing which has been debated, nothing that's been discussed this afternoon, that's challenging that. What we are merely saying is that if integration isn't going to be complete in time, if the many things which were raised by DCC uh, 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 Livingston yesterday at the Justice Committee won't be complete, then maybe we should think again. Because what he described was a situation where, by the deadline, terms and conditions, just in a moment, um, uh, terms and conditions, IT, third-party contract, and pensions will not be integrated, not, won't be ready to be completely converged in time for the deadline. Now, I'd ask you, what kind of merger is it where such substantial issues as the terms and conditions of employment, IT systems, and third-party contracts aren't going to be What kind of merger is that, and how on earth will it operate? Now, in this situation where such fundamental things aren't complete, I'd say you have to pause, because otherwise we will have a mess. I'll take Mr. Uh, McGregor. Fulton point. McGregor. Member accept what I said in my uh, speech earlier that that is for Police Scotland, DCC Livingston, uh, in the role just now. That would be for them to come to the Minister, to come to the Scottish Government and say that we need a pause. It isn't for the Tory party to bring it to the Chamber after this bill's been passed. That was the point that's been made. 
I can allow you a little extra time, Mr Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Now, if it was just the Tories making that point, I might well agree with Mr McGregor. I, I have little time or trust in them myself, but every now and again they do happen, happen upon, they do, I'm just waiting for it, they do happen to be right. Uh, and, and it is not just them that's saying it, it's trade unions, it's representative bodies. And that's who we will listen to on these benches. Those are bodies that represent the staff undertaking the work, the officers who are carrying out the duties within the British Transport, and they're saying this needs to be paused. So that's who we will listen to. And indeed, I think Liam MacArthur put it very well, because it now appears, given these, uh, these uh, issues, given the various problems that's been outlined, that the government simply is pursuing integration at any cost. And likewise, he was absolutely right when he raised the circumstances of the Smith Commission, because there was not just one model that was put forward. Devolution there were, uh, had a number, three different models that could have been pursued, and the government simply did not want to look at anything else other than complete integration with Police Scotland. The other models that could have been examined were ones which were about loose administrative alignment and accountability, one that went further around statutory alignment with, uh, uh, but with direction from the government, and both of those would not have encountered the problems which are now seen, because quite simply, the many interest groups, the many bodies that Colin Smith laid out, their warnings, their concerns have been proved to be right. But we must also look at the key strengths and distinctiveness of British transport policing. There is distinct law regarding the railways, a unique style, specific skill sets, and indeed one integrated railway network across the United Kingdom. And so therefore the challenges are prevent. And Neil Bibby is absolutely right to raise the point around the safety and concerns around that. Because if such fundamental issues as I raised at the beginning of my remarks cannot be integrated, we do have to ask the question about how effective across the, the range of duties it will be. But ultimately, we have to ask the question about the impact on staff. And I think the, the different employment model and the, the, the challenges that presents pensions raises the question whether if TUPI were actually to apply to this, would this merger be possible at all? Because my understanding of TUPI is that you have to have these things in place before a transfer can take place. So is it right that if TUPI were not to be able to take place if it did apply, we should carry forward with this at all. Ultimately, presiding officer, we should heed the calls to pause this. Nigel Goodband is right. The TSSA are right. Though you cannot just pursue this merger at any cost. We need to pause so we can get it right. Thank you. I call Michael Matheson. Five minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. Can I, at the outset, recognise and acknowledge the concerns that have been expressed by organisations such as the British Transport Police Federation, uh, the other trade unions in regard to their staff's terms and conditions and the concern that they have in regard to the transfer of BTP into a single command structure under uh, Police Scotland. And those issues have never been ignored and we've always acknowledged them and recognised them there. And uh, the most recent manifestation of those concerns and the letters which have been written by uh, these various representative bodies, I fully acknowledge and uh, we will continue to work with them as best we can to try and address the concerns that they raise with us and to try and offset some of the issues that they may uh, believe that we should make further progress on um, as quickly as possible. But the issue of the integration of uh, BTP policing into uh, a, a single command structure in Scotland is not a new one. It is a position which we set out back in 2011, uh, pre-Police Scotland, in that we believed that railway policing would be better integrated into local policing in order to create that single command structure and a better level of accountability around how they operate. And the whole idea of the integration of BTP policing into a single command structure, for example, with a force such as Police Scotland, the second biggest force in the UK, is not just peculiar to Scotland. Uh, the former mayor of uh, Lord Mayor of or the former mayor of uh, London, uh, Boris Johnson, now Foreign Secretary, when he was the mayor of London, was in favour of the integration of BTP in London yeah. into Metropolitan Police Service because it would create an integrated system. Uh, which would get a single command structure as uh, well. And I know that there are still views within London that that's what should happen in order to make sure that policing above the ground is the same command structure as policing below the ground, uh, particularly when it comes to the underground uh, network, uh, which is so extensive in London. And uh, members will also recognise, as uh, my colleague Hamza Yusuf has pointed out, the commitment from the Conservative Party uh, to abolish BTP in order to integrate it with the civil nuclear constabulary, with MOD policing, 
and with BTP. And the reality is that BTP, at the present moment, along with these other constabularies, is on borrowed time because of the commitment the UK government have made to going towards infrastructure policing, which brings together, as I mentioned, railway policing and also major road policing, eh, removing it from local eh, constabularies, something which was in their manifesto just in the last couple of months. I'll give way to Mr Mundell. Oliver Mundell. I thank uh, the Cabinet Secretary for uh, giving way. Can he confirm what discussions he's had from the UK government, with the UK government uh, around that proposal to establish whether or not there is, in fact, time uh, to pause this, as, as we've suggested? I can allow so you a little extra time. That, it's, it's, your, it's your government's policy. It's not our policy. Our policy is integration. We set that, back, we set that out in 2011. Mm. Your decision is to go forward with the integration to single infrastructure policing. That's your choice. Uh, and your decision, not the approach we think is an appropriate one here in Scotland. Can I also pick up on the issue relating to uh, terrorism, uh, which is made uh, reference to in the Conservative uh, motion? Uh, the reality is, when it comes to tackling issues of terrorism within the railway network here in Scotland, it's Police Scotland yeah. that do that. Uh, BTP have no armed policing in Scotland. They don't even have a custody facility in Scotland. Custody is provided by Police Scotland. I have four, four police stations in my constituency and in a recent meeting with my local commander, I asked him about the level of BT input, a BTP input into dealing with policing in those four train stations. None. It's the local police officers in Police Scotland that deal with any issues on the railway network at a local level. The reality is that Police Scotland, as the second biggest force in the UK, has a significant counter-terrorism capability, the second biggest in the whole of the UK plugged into the UK network in a way which BTP is not, which allows us to make sure that our single integrated command structure makes sure that whether it's railways or anything else, it's all fully integrated. And that's why I want to turn to the issue that Colin Smith it raised. And that's the idea that we will lose this specialism. The reality is that Police Scotland have a whole range of specialist areas of policing. They have border policing, airport policing, air support policing, underwater policing, firearms policing, road policing, mountain rescue policing. They have above, they have water policing as well. All of these areas have a specialist need for a specialist capability and particular culture around them. And there is no reason why railway policing cannot sit alongside that. I'll give way to the member. Colin Smith. So is the Cabinet Secretary simply dismissing the concerns of the trade unions and British Transport Police who are concerned that the uncertainty shown in their own staff survey, which shows that two thirds of staff may not transfer to Police Scotland because of the failure of this government to provide long term certainty in pays and conditions. Are you simply prepared to dismiss that and risk the loss of experienced staff who will bring their skills to the, the, the new body in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Second officer. I said at the very outset in my contribution that I recognise the concerns that have been raised by trade unions and the Federation representing their members and we'll continue to work hard to try and address these particular issues and the way in which this has been taken forward is through the Joint Programme Board which is jointly chaired by the Scottish Government and the UK Government helping to manage this in an orderly fashion, taking it forward. I'm not sure about how much time I've got left, Sign Officer. Do you have time to take another intervention? A brief one. Give way to the member. In the spirit of transparency that we were looking at earlier, will the government publish its full risk register in relation to the merger? The, you know, begin so to wind up. the way in which all the risks are being managed is taken forward through the Joint Programme Board, and we provide details on that to the, the, the Justice Committee on a regular basis to keep them updated on these issues. Can I turn briefly to the issue of the uh, Green Amendment, which my, member made reference, my colleague made reference to, which we would have supported, because we, we do recognise and acknowledge that there is a level of concern uh, amongst members of staff and also officers around some of the issues relating to uh, terms and conditions, and we'll be redoubling our efforts to try and address these issues as quickly as we can, and we'll continue to make sure that we do everything possible to engage with the representative bodies in addressing these issues. But we very much remain committed to the de no detriment policy, the, uh, making sure there's a triple lock in place when it comes to jobs, pay and pensions, and in particular in pensions, BTP officers, uh, when they transfer into Police Scotland, will be able to take their BTP pension with them into the service uh, uh, at that particular point. So we are working as hard as we can to try and address uh, some of these issues and concerns. There are complexities around it. No one un ever underestimated that, but we're doing everything we can to manage it. And I've got no doubt, President Officer, when it comes to providing a single command structure uh, within Scotland 
for railway policing alongside all of the other aspects of policing that take place in Scotland that we will have a much securer system than we have at the present moment and that will help to make sure that we deliver safety on our railways just exactly in the same way that we deliver safety on our roads and our communities right across Scotland on a day in doubt basis because of the dedication of our officers within Police Scotland. Thank you very much. And I call on Jamie Green to wind up the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, today's day has been an interesting one because so rarely does opposition chamber business allow Parliament the opportunity to carry out one of its other functions, and that is to shine a light into what happens in the real world after the political decisions that we make at decision time are put into place. We shouldn't, in this chamber, just pass legislation. We should question how it is implemented. What happens when policy becomes a reality? And that is the question. So today's debate brought forward by Liam Kerr does exactly just that. So you can see from not just the broad wealth of experience that exists in this chamber on the subject, but also the wide range of views and important opinions expressed by external stakeholders. So this debate goes far beyond what might, one might expect of an opposition motion. And why do I say that? because it is so rare in a single debate on a single issue, in this case the merger of BTP into Police Scotland, that we hear unanimous voices from such a broad spectrum of stakeholders, all sharing concerns over the progress of this merger. It is so very rare that I find myself in, in, in agreement with uh, someone like Manuel Cortes of the TSSA, who said, quote, the merger should be scrapped as it will endanger cross-border rail safety. And it's so rare that I find myself in agreement with both the RMT and ASLEF, who equally raise rightful concerns over staff conditions and passenger safety. But such is the nature of the widespread concern from many corners of the political and public sphere that we would be failing in our duties were we not to highlight it today. And the concerns are as varied as the sources. On one side, we have the Samaritans who acknowledge the specialist knowledge uh, and training of BTP officers and on another the BTP Federation themselves representing rank and file officers who say that this expertise will be diluted, their words not mine. On another side we have ScotRail and bear in mind the operations of ScotRail are run by Abellio who have experience of running the Dutch railways, stated that their experience of the Dutch system was that a loss of dedicated police services and integration with a national force could lead to a loss of specialism. Even Her Majesty's Inspectorate said that no proper due diligence had been done on the business case for this. And how evident is that today? And do you know what, Presiding Officer? Rona Mackay and Oliver Mandel are both right on this occasion. This debate should not be taking place. But can I say the very suggestion that we should not be de debating this that we should be not be debating it at all, I think is a disgraceful defense from the center benches. The question should not be why we on these benches have to justify why a pause is required. It is the government benches who should be explaining to us why a pause is not required. Neil Baby said that we should be listening to the concerns of officers themselves, and he is right. Liam MacArthur said that the government should be swallowing its pride and accept that there are issues with the progress of this measure. He is right. My colleague Liam Kerr opened his remarks, pointing to a number of very live and ongoing issues. Now, in Justice Committee yesterday, anyone who watched that footage will know that the April 2019 deadline is proving to be something of a challenge and something of a cliff edge. I was intrigued by the contribution made by John Finney of the Greens. Uh, he said that there are in his view, no issues around integrated control rooms or cross-border policing. Now, I appreciate that Mr. Finney and I are probably on opposite sides of the view about this merger in principle, but he should accept that, like it or not, stakeholders are concerned, and it is the stakeholders' views that matter. They do have concerns. I'm willing to take an intervention. John Finney. I'm very grateful for the member taking intervention on that point. Would the member acknowledge that there's ongoing cooperation? We've heard it from various sources, and that's not an issue. There are, a, there are across the United Kingdom, there are a range of different control systems. The British Transport Police works collaboratively with Police Scotland at the moment, and that would continue. 
Jamie Green. I think if there were no issues, then we would not be receiving representation from such a wide group of stakeholders who are telling us that there are existing issues that need to be addressed. And they have a number of concerns. It's not just control rooms. What progress has been made on pensions? What progress has been made on terms and conditions, on dual command systems, on IT systems? And if the internal B2B survey translates into reality, what would we do? What would we do if two-thirds of BTP officers did not transfer to Police Scotland? What if they took retirement? What if they transferred south of the border? What if they left the force altogether? Where would that leave Police Scotland and where would that leave us? Now, our motion today is very clear that we respect the devolution of control of transport policing. And we do respect the result of the decision of Parliament last July. But then the government had a choice. They could have achieved devolution in other ways. It is no great secret that we oppose this merger in principle, but if it is to go ahead, the sensible thing to do is to do it in a measured way that addresses the many concerns that people have. Let us respect the will of Parliament, but let us also respect that Parliament has a duty to hold the government to account. So I say this to the Cabinet Secretary and to any member who is inclined not to support our motion today. Don't take our word for it. And with the greatest of respects to Liam Kerr, don't just take his word for it either. Listen to rank and file officers. Listen to senior officers. Listen to the BTP Federation. Listen to Her Majesty's Inspectorate, train operators, the unions, and the acting chief uh, constable himself. The April 2019 is a challenge. So we ask the Scottish Government to take a sensible pause in proceedings. Take stock of some of these concerns and issues. These are issues not just raised by MSPs, but from those who will be directly affected by the merger. It is important that we get this right. And if there are any benefits to be found in this merger, then get the merger right. I encourage members to do the right thing and support our motion this evening. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that concludes our debate on railway policing. The next item of business is consideration of two business motions, motion 10062 setting out a business programme and motion 10063 on a stage two timetable for a bill. I would ask anyone who objects to uh, press their request to speak button now and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move the above named motions. Formally moved. Thank you very much. No one has asked to speak against the motions, therefore the question is that motions 10062 and 10063 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We turn now to decision time. And there are six questions. The first question is that amendment 10038.1 in the name of Michael Matheson, who seeks to amend motion 10038 in the name of Liam Kerr on justice, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to division. Members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 10038.1 in the name of Michael Matheson is yes, 64, no, 57. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 10038.4 in the name of Daniel Johnson, which seeks to amend motion 10038 in the name of Liam Kerr, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The Next question is that motion 10038 in the name of Liam Kerr, as amended, on justice be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members may cast their votes now.
The result of the vote on motion 10038 in the name of Liam Kerr, as amended, is yes, 88, no, 34. There are no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. Uh, now, I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Hamza Youssef is agreed, then the amendment in the name of Daniel Johnson will fall. The, th the next question is therefore that amendment 10039.2 in the name of Hamza Youssef, which seeks to amend motion 10039 in the name of Liam Kerr on railway policing, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote. Members, we cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 10039.2 in the name of Hamza Youssef is yes, 59, no, 57. There were six abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. So the final question is that motion 10039 in the name of Liam Kerr, as amended on railway policing, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We'll move to a division. Members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on motion 10039 in the name of Liam Kerr, as amended, is yes, 59, no, 57. There are six abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. And that concludes decision time. We'll turn now to members' business in the name of Gail Ross on adverse childhood experiences, but we'll just take a few moments for members to change seats. <laughs>